dance floor as you can hear what he has to say. He's with his dance floor, he thinks the world is all over. What up, Net fans? Net support here. Bring your latest in your Brooklyn Nets beginning of the playoffs news. So here we are uh, right after game two of the first round of the playoffs between the Nets and the Celtics. And the Nets are pretty much exactly what we thought they would be. They're up 2-0. And look, I'm going to be honest. This does not look good for the Celtics, especially since now it looks like Jason Tatum that might miss some games with an eye injury. And like, I mean, it was already looked bleak for them without Jalen Brown, but you take into consideration, no, no Jason Tatum and the way the Nets looked, especially in game two. I mean, I almost never predict a sweep um, ever as I touched upon my last Nets boy episode, but this looks like it's going to be, but you never know. Cause anything can happen, but let's, before we talk about game three and game four, Let's look at game one and two and which for me were like two totally different games. Like, let, let's be honest here. Um, game one was a, was very frustrating to watch. It was, it, I'm going to be honest. I mean, if there is such a thing as an ugly win, I've, I've said this several times. Um, I've said this a lot, actually. If, if there's such a thing as an ugly playoff win or, uh, or a disappointing playoff win, it was game one because the big three – did not play well. Harden, Kyrie, and KD did not play well in that game, especially Durant. Yes, the Nets figured it out in the second half and, and kind of took over the game, and they ended up winning by 11 anyway. But everything that we fear as Net fans from the big three kind of happened, right? Durant really struggled out of the gate. Kyrie becoming a, you know, a one-on-five player. Harden not being the regular pass first player he's been as a net. He was much more hunting shots like he has, even though he only took 10 when it was all said and done. He still was looked like he was trying to force his way into trying to get some points, trying to get fouled instead of trying to get everyone else involved. Um, it was a lot of iso ball, right? A lot of your turn, my turn, his turn crap. And we've talked about this before. This is what we don't want to see from the Nets big three. It's why everyone's saying like, oh, the Nets aren't going to win because the big three don't know how to play together. They're just going to take turns. And, and that's what it was. And the, the, for the Nets, the good thing was that despite them doing this ISO ball and also not playing very well, I believe they were combined to shoot under like 42% or something, the big three, the Nets were something ridiculous like that, which is like, mind-boggling when you think about Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden, that they're going to combine to shoot under 45%, but they did. But despite all that, they still won. And like, but it is your fear because that's what you were afraid of if you were the Nets. There was no ball movement at all. I believe, I don't remember how many assists the Nets had, but it was, I think like 21 assists or something like that. Not even, not even. I know it was like 19 assists, something that was just like a big disappointment. And it, just, it was just ugly offense. It was an ugly game in general. It was just fortunate that the Celtics couldn't score either. And that the Nets defense was actually pretty good, um, which they held the Celtics, you know, under 100 points. And the reality is when I was watching this game, I just wasn't happy. I wasn't happy from what I saw. Every dumb shot by Kevin Durant and Kyrie and James Harden forcing things trying to get fouled. And what did I say? The key to the Nets success are the other guys. Joe Harris went one for 10. Right, Jeff Green didn't really do anything. Blake Griffin didn't even score. And it wasn't necessarily because of the fact that, you know, those guys struggled, though one for 10 for Joe Harris is bad. It was because they weren't getting opportunities to shoot the ball. I think something like, like, I think the big three combined for like 59 of the team's 82 shots or something like that. I, mean, I think it was worse than that. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it was, it was too much. It was too much, too much big three jacking up tons of shots and it wasn't working. And it, but instead of moving the ball, they just kept doing it. And the reality is that Durant, Kyrie and Harden are just so talented that I guess eventually against a depleted Celtics team without Jalen Brown and, and really struggling throughout the, throughout the entire game, they started making shots and they were able to win. I mean, that's the reality of it. it but I'll tell you this right now, if the Nets play the way the Nets played in game one against any other playoff opponent, they probably would have lost the Nets. 
If they did that, if they pull that crap against the Bucks or the 76ers or if they, the Lakers or the Suns or the Jazz, heck, even the Heat, if they pull that crap, heck, I'll even give it to the credit for the Knicks. If they pull that crap even against the Knicks or the Hawks, I think the Nets would have lost. But because the Celtics are very, you know, ravaged with injuries and just simply aren't that great of a team, they were able to overcome it and still win by 11 in game one. And I just didn't like it. And I just said to myself, I hope I see better in game two. I hope Steve Nash says, hey, guys, we got lucky because we played like crap. We weren't moving the ball. I said, I hope Steve Nash emphasizes ball movement before game two. And I guess he did. Because game two was like a 180 when it came to ball movement. Nets had, I believe, 30, um, I think 32 assists which was like third all time in the, in the playoff history for the Nets. Joe Harris had 22 first half points, six of eight from shooting. Blake Griffin had fantastic flashback dunks and and ones and played with tons of energy. You know, Jeff Green made some big plays before he left with a foot injury, which we'll touch upon a little later on. Shamit was knocking threes down. You know, uh, you know, everyone just played really well for the Nets. And that opened up everything and allowed Kevin Durant and Joe, ha- and, and excuse me, Ky- Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant and Blake Griffin to facilitate and do their thing. I mean, Katie led the way with 26 points. And that's what I want to see. Katie at 26, Joe Harris at 25. Harden, uh, Harden had double digits assists. Kyrie only needed to drop 15. And the Nets blew out the Celtics. They blew them out. They scored out, dropped 130 points. And that's what this Nets team needs to do. Clearly, Steve Nash emphasized ball movement, and clearly the message came through. Look, when the Nets move the ball the way they did in game two, it doesn't matter who they're playing. No one is beating them. No one can compete with the Nets when they move the ball. When they play iso ball and take turns, taking dumb shots like they did in game one, they're going to lose to most of the better teams in the league. But because this, this team's the Celtics, they won that game. And because it was the Celtics again, they won by almost 30 points. It was ridiculous. And it was, I was just laughing. I was watching the game and I'm like, this is what I expected from this Nets team. Chris pass, Chris pass, dunk, layup, through open shot. Joe Harris knocking down shots. It was fantastic. And once again, the defense was pretty dang good. Kevin Durant had four blocks, got a lot of good rebounds, some steals. Kyrie was playing good defense. Harden was playing good defense. Of course, Nicholas Claxton always plays great defense. It was just impressive, and it was just a dominating performance in game two. So I went from being really frustrated from what I saw in game one to ecstatic and like, wow, I'm blown away in game two. And look, I couldn't be happier from what I saw and how I feel moving into game three now, um, which is uh, Sunday night. No, what day is it? Uh, Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night. No, Friday night. When's the next game? Today was Tuesday. I mean, I mean, the first the game was on Tuesday. Wednesday they're off. Thursday off. Friday night, Friday night. Yes, Friday night. I don't know, every day is blurring together. I can't remember what the hell just happened, even though I just saw the game last night. Right? What's today? Today's Wednesday. Or maybe when you're seeing this video, it's Thursday. But when I'm filming it, it's Wednesday. I'm so confused. But anyway, the next game, I believe, is, is Friday, and then game four is, is Sunday. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm excited to see. <laughs> oh, God. I'm excited to see what they do in game three on Friday in Boston. Um, look, if there's ever going to be a game that I feel like the Celtics have a chance to win, if they weren't going to win game one, I really doubt they're going to win any of them. But game three is, to me, the only chance I, I feel like the Celtics have because the series is not completely over yet. And, you know, their first home game, the Celtic fans are going to be rowdy. They're going to be all over Kyrie. And it's going to be a fun game. Um, but I will say this, if the Nets win that game, which I believe they will. The series will be a sweep um, because I do not see the Celtics winning game four, even uh, even at home. Um, But uh, I still think the Nets are going to win. I I mean, it's it's not even close to the talent level. Um, But I will say this. I really hope the Jeff Green injury is not that severe. It's a foot bruise, they're saying. So if I'm Steve Nash, I'm actually holding him out of the rest of the series, to be honest, because 
I don't think you need Jeff Green to beat the Celtics. Actually, I know you don't need Jeff Green to beat the Celtics. So if I'm Steve Nash, I'm easing him into it. I mean, Bruce Brown, Shamit, you know, Nicholas Claxton, Blake Griffin, Joe Harris, the other guys, they've got this. Maybe play Tyler Johnson or Alizé Johnson instead of uh, Jeff Green. But the rest of the guys got the other guys got it outside the big three. Rest Jeff Green, you know, that's what I would do. And uh, hopefully it's nothing serious. But the reality is, I think the Nets, I think the Nets got this. I feel very confident. So um, I think they're going to win game three. And I, if they win game three, 100% they're going to win game four. Actually, I think they're going to win game four. Can't say 100%, but 99% sure they'll win game four. I don't see this going five games. Originally, I predicted that. But after seeing what I've seen so far, I'm going to say it's a sweep, especially since Jason Tatum might be out. For, for significant games, if not the rest of the series. They said the rest of the series, but I think that's because he might miss two games, and that probably will be the rest of the series. But uh, with an eye injury, I mean, look, I'm very happy. I can't, I can't complain. I can't complain after what I saw in game two. I just hope we see more of what we see in game two than in game one moving forward. So that's it. There you have it. Fast episode for, for Nets Boy. A little over 10 minutes. Not much to say. Just really great ball movement in game two. And, and and just really pleased with the Nets being up 2-0. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you agree with me that you hope to see more from Game 2 than we saw from Game 1. If you believe that this if the Celtics have a chance to win a game in this series, um, you know, what you're hoping uh, to see moving forward. Let me know what you guys think. And keep your eyes open to the next Nets Boy episode, which will probably be after Game 4, which will either be a series wrap-up and then you know, we we'll, might have to address the next series or not. I don't know. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but should be after game four. So you'll probably see it around Monday. Expect Monday because game four is Sunday. I figured that out once I figured out what day of the damn week it is. So keep your eyes open for that episode. And until then, this is Nets boy. Feeling relatively positive for the Nets in the playoffs for the first time in years. Years. Like lots of years. And signing off.